Good afternoon and welcome to this panel discussion hosted by Inlumi and OneStream. Again, a warm welcome to all of you sitting here in the studio and, of course, to all of you sitting in front of your computer screens somewhere out there in the world. Actually, I think we are closer to 300 registrants for this event, which leads me to believe that the topic that we're going to cover together with Sandvik today is high up on the agenda on quite a few big companies out there in the world today. Anyway, my name is Marcus Hulsten and I will be your, your moderator throughout this discussion today. In my daily work, I'm the sales director at OneStream Solutions in the Nordics. And in that role, that's when I've come to meet with Sandvik and gotten to know Marta Hafselius, who I will be introducing shortly. And indeed, Sandvik is on a very interesting journey. It's a big transformation, a transformation that goes through many different functions and many areas of OneStream. Together with Marta, we will explore the um, the effect on the finance function in this big transformation. And we will be covering topics like the day-to-day -day challenges in a big, huge project like this, how to prepare, how to get people getting along with you. We will like to be touching on things like automation, what to automate, how to automate, and likely some things around integration as well. For those of you who don't know who Wallstream is, we are a software company in the area of performance management. That means group reporting, constellation of actuals, reporting in general, also compliance around well, things tied to finance. It could be IFRS 16 or ESG, likely the hottest topic out there now. Account reconciliation is another example. But we're also covering areas around different types of planning, forecasting and planning, financial planning, but also different types of operational planning, like demand planning, revenue planning, cash planning, what have you. With us today in the panel, we have three participants. We have Ash Chapman, who is the CEO of Inlumi. Inlumi is our esteemed diamond partner, who is focusing on helping our clients or joint clients with um, advisory and implementation services in the area of performance management. And that is exactly what they're doing together with Sandvik today. Next to Ash, we have my colleague Ryan Lauks who is the Senior Director of Solutions Consulting in EMEA at OneStream. And, of course, our guest of honor, Marta Havselius, who is the VP of Group Reporting and Consolidation at Sandvik. She has had several roles in finance before. Among some of them is Klarna and Autoleave, and she also has a background as an auditor within Deloitte. Before, oh, sorry, uh, Marta, you are responsible for the finance part of the biggest financial transformation project in the Nordics right now. And I'm impressed and also grateful that you're spending some time with us today to give your views and thoughts from where you are today in, in this big program that you're running. And I'll hand it over to you, but as I start, we'll kick off a short video.
So by looking at this video, you get a good understanding on who we are and what we want to achieve. For Sandvik, it has always been core to understand the market conditions. And we always strive to work in a close relationship with our customers. And by doing so, we will have a good understanding on their needs. And here we want to be good in delivering on their needs and to be innovative, to be able to do that, both in a short-term perspective, because this is important for us to be able to adapt to the market needs at the moment. But also from a long-term perspective, it's important for us to understand the trends that are coming within the metal cutting and machining solutions, as well as the rock and uh, mining and rock solutions, and also the rock processing solutions. And now we will look at some numbers as well, just for you to have an understanding of, of our size as a group as well. So looking at the end of last year, we had approximately 39,000 employees. And we had 86 billion Swedish crowns in revenue spread over about 150 countries. And we are also very proud and happy about the investments that we are doing in the research and development area. And we invested 3.5 billion SEEC last year. And we're also happy about our global R&D centers as well as our active patents. And today we will look and focus the discussion on how we contribute into our overall strategy. We make the shift, advancing the world for engineering. And for us as a group, it's really important to have a solid platform to, to stand on, including a win winning culture for our employees, ensuring that we are the employer of choice. It's also important for us to have this close relationship with our customers ensuring that we are their first choice as well. We equally important in this platform is to be agile through the cycle. And with this, we mean that we need to be able to adapt to the market conditions, both in up terms, but also in down terms. And when we succeed on delivering in this platform, we think that we will be really successful delivering on our strategic shifts, being sustainability shift. We want to be good to the planet. We want to do our utmost from a sustainable perspective. It's also important to ensure that we shift to growth, meaning that we succeed with our strategic M&A activities. They will broaden our overall portfolio in our offerings. And part of that is also adding up to the digital shift, because when doing these acquisitions, and we have done some of them lately as well, we will also broaden our offerings within the digital market and digital products. And uh, this is also something that we are trying to achieve within the digital shift. But then we will also talk today about how we contribute as a finance community in this digital shift strategy. Fantastic. Interesting. Thank you, Marta. Before kicking off the actual discussions, I'd like to remind everyone sitting there in front of your computers that on the right-hand side of your screen, there is a sec section where you can ask questions. And in the end of this discussion, we will bring up these questions so we can talk about them together. So please fire off with all your questions. The more, the better. So, Marta, about the shift. I think you call it the digital shift in the area of finance, right? How would you say that this is being reflected in the finance strategy? Can you elaborate a little bit on that? Yeah, sure. We have incorporated the digital shift as one part of our global finance OKRs. And when I say OKR, I mean objective and key results. And this is a central part of it. And for us, when looking at digital shift within finance, it's important that we drive automation as well as efficiency. And we think that by utilizing our financial systems in the best way, we will be able to, to be more efficient in terms of delivering our closing activities as well as analyzing the data and, perform, and the performance management part as well. Why do you think that this was so critical to take place now? So I know this will be a journey for Samvik in terms of the wider shift, but also finance's role in that. Why do you think that that was needed 
so desperately now, basically? I think the easiest answer on that is that our support of a current system is ending uh, quite soon. Um, and we wanted to have some time before that to explore and evaluate we, what kind of solution we would like to have. But I'm actually also happy that we are at, at that time right now as well, because this is also a possibility for us to, to learn new things and to take the next step for us. And it's also very well suited into our overall strategy. And in terms of that being part of the, the wider Sambic shift, because, you know, Sambic's strategy isn't developed around a solution sort of, you know, coming end of life. Um, why do you think these two sort of things almost aligned? Or do you think it's a coincidence? You mean the digital shift and the program as such? Yeah. Or, um, no, it's, it's not a coincidence, but I think what, what we are always trying to achieve when, when looking at the objectives for a year, we're always trying to see how can we as a function contribute in a good way. So what we basically do is that we're looking at the overall strategy and look at all the different objectives. And then we're trying to see, okay, how can we contribute in a good way to, to help Sandvik to take the next step and to deliver in our strategy. But for, all, for us, it's really important that we build a solution that can also ensure that we can take the next step, that we can be more automized after this journey has ended or when we are taking the next step in the journey, that we can become an even better business partner. Because if we can automize things, we will also be able to do more value adding tasks instead of reviewing the data. We can make the system works for us, basically. And, and that, of course, would also be something that all the employees would enjoy. And do you think that, that that efficiency is going to be critical to you serving your customers? So part of the, the digital shift is about being customer's choice. So your customers, the operational managers within Sambic, do you think that that efficiency and automation is what's going to be key for you to deliver to them? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so as, you, as you say, for, for me, my customers are both internally, but also ex external customers, if we look at that we are delivering information to the market as well. But, but absolutely, if we can automize things, we will have more time for other, other topics. We will be able to create more and new ways of parts in our performance management. We will be able to, to look at how to review data in another way. And uh, yeah, I, I definitely think that this is the right next step for us. When you think about automation, that you, you touched on it there with talking about data, but you know automation can come in many sort of ways in in, in a financial sort of process, publishing the final report or um, processing at the, at the right time. What do you think is going to be critical for you um, achieving those efficiencies? Um, what what are the components that are going to affect that that automation or be the building blocks of that automation? I think the first part where we definitely have a lot to work with is the integration towards the towards one stream. Um, because what we have seen today when asking around and looking at the statistics is that we have quite a lot of, a, lot, a big portion of manual input. So mm -hmm. data being manually inputted or SIM automated. Basically you, you run the file from the ERP system and then you load it. Um, and, and here we can take a big step. And our long-term vision with implementing OneStream is to have a fully automated solution. We will not be there at go live, but that's the long-term term vision that we have. One of the trends that we see a lot is organizations taking more information from source systems. Are you planning to do that, or are you just collecting uh, what you did before? Um, both yes and no, I would say. Um, as an organization, I mean, we're always, uh, I mean, we're always a bit, um, uh, we don't want to move too fast there. I, I know that we have been told that the system can cope with a lot of uh, information and that you can actually use it then when drilling down. So you will gain quite a lot from a follow-up perspective the more data you have there because you will be able to use the drill functionality. But for us at Go Live at least, the most important is to have at least a minimum of the data that we have today. But then... We're also looking at adding new functionality. So how can we take the next step in our financial processes as well? And to also add functionalities on uh, things that we are doing manually today outside of the system, maybe in Excel or in other systems. Ash, I mean, 
what you must see this a lot as well when you're involved in those design and those sort of scoping sessions that people always call out for that for automation it's the holy grail that everyone kind of searches for leads to efficiency more sustainable processes what what, what are you seeing in, in the market and around that area and how people are actually achieving that I think as a generalization for us, so it's, it's becoming one of the biggest topics in implementations, which is where you're going to get the source information from and how much you're going to take. And often the trickiest question to ask is, well, that's the hardest one to answer because it overlaps with something you're doing in a different system. Yeah. So it's not something that I can give a sort of simple golden formula to, but having that sort of data integration strategy very clear up front and the, and the governance that goes with it is probably the largest topic we see being debated and discussed. Where, does it, where do you get the information from? How much do you need? And then how are you going to be using it? I mean, if we go back to that slide, that's at the start, the numbers that you put up there, of, you know, Sambic as, as an organisation, it's very impressive. Um, that must also contribute to this. You know, you think about the different um, regions and parts of the world that you do business and the number of people, you know, information is going to be pocketed all over the place. Yeah, and I've, I think we're probably going to touch on it in a minute, but therein lies some of the challenges, isn't it? Which is you're trying to create something that deals with quite a wide range of needs. Those needs differ around the organisation and the world, and there's a limit to what you can do in the first instance. So you definitely have choices to make, I think, walking before you can run. And you've got the joy of making those choices, Marta. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're having a lot of fun. <laughs> then our debits. But There's one true thing, which is it is always harder than you think. Yeah. When it comes to data, it's never easy. Start early is my single biggest bit of advice. And the thing, the challenge comes that, you know, you reacting to the demands of your customer you, you, you can't always anticipate what those are going to be. And sometimes those are net new things that you need to present. So those are also, how are you dealing with things um, like that as you're going through this journey? How are you remaining kind of agile through this shift from a finance department? We decided quite early on in the program that we want, didn't want to follow a typical waterfall structure. Um, and with waterfall structure, I mean that you you do tasks in sequentially. So we don't start with one thing, close that, and then we start off with the next one. So we decided quite early on that we, will, we need to do a lot of things simultaneously. Given our size and complexity, it would take ages if we would have done one task yeah. at a time. Um, so, and, and, and by doing that, I mean, we need to be agile. We need to be able to, to adjust wherever we are because it's also hard to to foresee all the things that will happen. And I mean, we have had struggles within the program as well, as you always have, because there will be more complexity than anticipated. You think that something was set up in one way, but it's another way. And to add to that complexity, we have about a little bit less than 60 different ERP systems. Yeah. And not all of them are having the same chart account either. So they are having different chart accounts within those ERP systems. And that also puts much more complexity in, into the, the game, so to speak. I remember when we spoke about this this time last year, I think you were looking to set a record there for us of the most systems that we might need to it's interact not with. <laughs> <laughs> not for you guys. Yeah. <laughs> you definitely need to walk before you can run when you're dealing with that much yeah. variety. Yeah, and here we're also looking, if we're looking or discussing the integration area, we also have different sorts of plans for the integration. Obviously, in the long term, we would like yeah. to and prefer to have a system by system to system integration. So have a, a seamless flow of the data input towards one stream. But we need to be frank and honest here, that will not happen at Go Live. So what we are striving is basically to have whatever the entities are having today, we want to have the same minimum at yeah. Go Live. So some, some parts, a, a tiny, tiny part will be system to system because we have it today. Some parts will be semi-automated and some parts will be manual as well. Because, I mean, it's all about change as well. Yeah. And even if we would be able to set up some parts of the integration maybe earlier on, um, it will be also hard for the employees and for the users to also change their way of working. Yeah. I mean, it, 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 there are two sides of the coins. One thing in the complexity and what we can build and be able to set up for Go Live. And the other part is also how, how can the users, how can the people have time to also adapt yeah. 
Yeah, I think it's so important. You have to take a phased approach. And um, I think the good thing with integration, even if you are dealing with 60 different source systems, is you, you can do one at a time or 10 at a time. You don't have to do all 60 to the same level on the same day. You can yeah. afford to phase it, and it's the only way to do it and keep the people engaged and uh, motivated. Yeah. I think we'll come back to change, because I think change is the common denominator of this discussion. Now, let's go a little bit back to, to basics. I'm also thinking about what we were talking about a year ago. Um, we talked about the, um, well, the challenges that you foresee back then, around whatever it might be. And now you're halfway into the uh, program. Are there any big challenges that, is, well, that did not become as big as you thought? And are there any examples of challenges that are more complex than you thought that they would be? Yeah, I think we, to start off with, we thought maybe that we would be faster when it comes to the alignments on uh, the design uh, of, the, of the setup that we have. But we have, we have put out a lot of time on alignments with the organization, so with our business area representatives. Uh, and this, I think, was maybe a, a surprise as well for, for the Illumi team. How much can you actually <laughs> discuss before you take a decision or before you, you just decide or you, you take a proposal to it, the steering group? It definitely has been more laborsome. But then you always tell me the same answer, which is that the only way to bring everyone along the journey with them yeah. is to sort of gather that opinion in the room. So, yes, it does take longer but it's for the right reasons. Yeah. And then it's just about trying to accommodate it in the plan and not trying to overstate your ambitions, I think. Yeah, yeah I think that's important. Um, and another challenge that we have had, and that was also more complex than we first anticipated, is the integration part. That is the tricky one. Um, and even though that we have different setups, I mean, we are having... There are a lot of systems integrating to a consolidation and reporting and performance management system. You might believe that it's only ERP systems, but, but it's not. I mean, yeah. you receive information from all sorts of systems. So you, you tend to forget maybe about those in the beginning or when you're trying to do your counting in the, in the beginning, you think that there are so few, but it ends up being quite many. And when you have a lot of different systems, there are a lot of more stakeholders that you need to take into account. Indeed. And all of them will have a lot of questions because they want to understand. They want to do a, a good job as well. So they will ask a lot of questions. So when you think that you have some sort of time where you should be, time's running quite quickly. Um, so I would say add a lot more time than you think to the integration part. But back to the design part. I mean, are there any specific areas where you had to have more discussions than others when it comes to what to agree on? in the design part, because it's always the same thing. Design takes longer than you think, because you can do some different things in one stream. But what are the different areas where you say, oh, we need to have more discussion, we need to have more alignments? Any examples? I would say all areas, basically, are where we wanted to change something from not doing a lift and shift, because lift and shift is easier, but it's also waste a bit waste of time from my perspective, because now when we have this unique opportunity, I mean, it happens maybe, I don't know, every 15th year or something. Now we have the unique opportunity to, to actually take the next step in our processes, to rethink. Um, so I would say all areas where we are doing, even if it's a slight change, those are the tricky ones, because then people want to understand and they need to understand how this will impact their work. So not only understanding the new process, but also at the same time understanding how will this impact me. So I think, um, and it all comes back to change management, basically. Yes. How do you work with people in this type of pro project? Yeah, I mean, it, that's certainly our experience, which is not changing things when you're doing an implementation like this is an opportunity missed. But yeah. changing things is also then much more difficult yes. to do. But that's kind of the game you're in, really. This is certainly the best time to do it, and you just have to live with the fact that it is going to be more complicated to get everyone on the same page at the same time. I think that's such an important point you, that you said there, and that's what I was kind of, my, where my mind was going with the question earlier of why now with, with the Samvik shift is these things, they, they don't come around every one, two yeah. years. So to make that lift and shift now, and the next time you do it is in 15 years, well, the, the last time you did that, 
transformation was 15 years before. So you've lived with something for effectively 30 years then, almost. So it's Sounds I, a long time. Isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Because I, I see this quite a lot at the, at the moment with, you know, we need to do something about X because it is no longer supported or it's coming end of life, but we want to just do the same thing. Yeah. And you think that's like agreeing to doing something that you wanted to do 15 years ago and to continue doing it, you know, another 15 years. So it's a really, um, yeah, it's a really interesting point that you make there. And it's nice to see that you guys have embraced that and looked at, you know, what we can do um, to be part of this. You know, this is a small chunk of Sambix's enormous um, shift, the, the, the finance element. I, I think for me, that's a, one of the things that I've enjoyed the most about this project. So you gave it in your introduction, Marta, it's the fact that, the why you're doing it is anchored in the strategy of the organisation and yeah. the role that finance is um, evolving and adapting to play. So it's all of the choices and all of the pain is contextualised by a sort of bigger cause and a need. Mm. And it's not... Um, it's a, yes, of course, you are replacing a sort of end-of-life platform and system, but that's not how you ever contextualise the change. It's always had a sort of bigger purpose, and I think that's easy to then get behind, and it's easy to then sort of absorb the fact that my life will be a bit more difficult and complicated as I go through it, but I can see why we're doing it. Yeah, yeah and the why is really important, I think, also when, when performing a change like this, because, I mean, we have around 1,300 users approximately, so there are a lot of people being impacted by this change and something that they haven't really chosen themselves. Yeah. Uh, and the most of them are not using the system either. I mean, they report into the system, but then they are done for that month yeah. and then they don't really use it in, in that sense. So then it's also really important to, to have them on board on this type of program and on, on the things that we're doing. Yeah. So we are also working a lot with the communication. Mm. Can you give us some examples then of how you're communicating and bringing everyone along the journey? Yeah, we, we basically take all the chances we can um, to, uh, to both inform about where we are in the program, but also to strive for an open dialogue. Because bef before I give you the examples, um, one of the things that is core for us is that we do acknowledge that the change is hard for many individuals. And we are really clear with, with the organization as well that it's going to get worse before it gets better. Yes. Because today you know what kind of solution you have, but tomorrow when you go live, it will be something new. People mm. need, need to know and learn new things. So what we are focusing on now when doing all the activities is also ensuring that we have the hearts and mind with us from the employees and users. Because it's a little bit too late to have them on board and feel that they are inspired by the program and or really see see how they can benefit from this program when entering the training. So we want to have that yeah. even before. So what things that we are doing uh, today in the program is that we are having monthly webinars as an mm -hmm. example, um, where we share different types of things that we are uh, have decided within the program in terms of the setup, the data model but also in terms of training, what will happen during parallel run. Already now we're talking about that, even though this will happen in April and May. We're also having an intranet page where we are having articles, uh, video clips, um, and both from a finance perspective and IT perspective, because we need to be aligned, and also from a group perspective versus business area, because we all need to be aligned in the message as well. Yeah. One of the things I, I always noted from the... Uh, the circles, the the shift sort of premise. Um, one of them is being the employee's choice. Yeah. And this is kind of a balancing act for you because, you know, employees need to be happy. They want to yeah. work with modern solutions. They want to work in efficient environments, but they also want to work the way that they have done for, you know, the last decade or something. Yeah. So how are you managing that that balance of, you know, this will be, a better place to work and a better place to be a, you know, and finance one of those 1300 users. How are you balancing that with the, the familiarity of working the way you always have? We're really working a lot with showing how it would look like, both in terms of them making them familiarize with how it will look like. Because if you feel that, oh, I, I recognize this, it will, it's going to be easier when you are there. But also we need to 
describe why we're doing certain things. So we want them to understand the why. It's, it's really critical, and especially working within mm. finance, you want to know why. You just don't want to, someone to tell you, do that, and it's going to be okay. Sounds like yeah. my kids. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so you really need to uh, to understand why we're doing certain things, yeah. but also feel inspired and have the possibility to to ask questions, because if you have, I mean, and we always have Q and A sessions at the end of all our sessions. And uh, yesterday, for example, I visited, or I joined one of the meetings with one of our business areas for their division of controllers to be able to ask questions to me. Uh, and and we really we, we were presenting for a short short while of the of the full hour and then they had had a big uh, portion of the time only for asking questions whatever they wanted just to make sure that they can raise concerns they can ask questions they feel that we are listening to them because this is really critical for us it's for us it's not only a group initiative or a group program we want to be aligned with, with the with the business as well because they are the ones using it as well. It, it needs to work for, work for them as well when reporting. So this open dialogue is really, really key. I've always found these types of projects fascinating because you, you think of it as a, in fact, you call them systems implementations and then you look at the overall project plan and it's kind of this big and there's like a thousand boxes and there's a small one somewhere that says build. But actually the rest of it is all about people, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Technology is an enabler, but it's people that make it possible that make it happen. So I think, um, I mean, it, it's clear you're investing a lot in the change side of it. That's really important. But um, what are some of the sort of difficult consequences that come uh, by being inclusive? I would say the alignment part is important, but it takes a lot of time. And to be honest, I mean, of course, it will take energy as well. Uh, depending on where you are in that. So, some will feel that it goes too quickly. Some will feel, but we have discussed this several times already. Can we just close this down? Yes. But I think that it's really, really key. And when you understand how important it is, because aligning, even if it takes longer time now, and it might feel frustrating from time to time, I think that when, when it comes to the point of going live, then it will be so much easier for the yeah. users to adopt. And they will also feel that we're listening into their perspective. Yeah, you're right. And it, it's definitely easier to take those questions now and invest the time now than it is after you've kind of built it and it's tested and users are trained on it and it's live in use. It's so much easier to... Yeah, and, ev yeah. and even if we're saying that it's going to get worse before it gets better, you don't want them to feel like this was really bad. <laughs> <laughs> you want them to see that, OK, this is one step at the journey. Because go live for us is really... It's one point in the time, but but the program doesn't end there. We will continue to work with new functionalities. So it's important for them to understand. I need to hold you back with lots of topics to, to go through. Just a, a question related, maybe two topics in one, and yes. you're touching on it, and the role of technology. I know that you are a very decentralized organization. Yes. And from what I'm hearing, and I know that you want to give back more information to whoever is going to consume the information, but how do you see the role of technology, the technology is now one stream, how do you foresee that to be well, the enabler of giving more information back to the different stakeholders? Yeah, first of all, we think that the, um, the, dig the digital is the future. I mean, that is the future. We, we need to adopt to that as well. And uh, for us, it's um, important that we take the next step with our systems, our, our financial systems need to be able to deliver. They need to be modern. They need to be flexible and scalable. And for us, it's key, within our core competence, it's key to be able to deliver timely and, um, I mean, data with high quality and, and to be efficient. We are releasing the numbers to the market quite quickly within Sandvik. So for us, it's really important that the technology is with us. It, it needs to help us in, the, I mean, it, it needs to work for us, as I usually say. So add the functionality that we want there and we can spend more time on value adding things instead, uh, like putting more time on analyzing the data or figuring out new ways of looking at data or, or presenting data for dashboards, etc. But for us also, just one more addition on that. Another thing for me that the technology helps us with in this program is actually the collaboration with IT. I mean, we are used yeah. to collaborate with the finance business areas and in some extent with the IT competence as well. But what I have seen so far in this program 
is that we are really working together with IT in a broader perspective in a really, really good way. And this also really fits well into our ambition and aim to, to work even more in multifunctional team in the future. So it's a really good stress test or learning how to work together in a good way and yes. learn from each other. Yeah. Uh, I mean, maybe you just gave one uh, benefit there, which is learn from each other. But are there any other benefits around working more closely with IT? Yeah, I think learning from each other. So because then we will learn, I mean, within our area, we, we know our system, but when designing things as we have done, I mean, we, in, my, in my team, we have basically designed whatever needs we have in a system today, we are designing them. But by working together, we will broaden the picture, not only focusing on the system that we are responsible for, but also understand the change that we are building into our system, how will that impact all other yes, systems around? System. Yep. Can we do it in another way? Are there things that we need to think of? Yep. And that we will be helped of by, by working together with, with IT as well. So basically stream, streamlining the way, yep. the way we're working with our systems and the integration of those. And I think that's the only way that you really get the, the benefit from these as well is by, by working together as, as, you, as you know, two departments. Um, somebody said to me once that um, like software and technology surpassed the, the, the needs of uh, the users or the, or the business now. So it's important to understand the value you can get from this from IT as a service provider to you in finance as well. Yeah. One of the things I was going to ask you, Ashley, is... Um, you guys are quite innovative in the way that you guide people through this journey. Um, does you know one stream and the technology provide you a way of of taking people through this journey? I think you've done hands-on type POCs before and things like that during your implementations. Yeah, so we, we've been able to change. I mean, Marty talked about it earlier, sort of not doing waterfall anymore, being a bit more agile about how you build and design the implementation plans, and that's how we try to work now a bit more iterative or maybe even agile in the way you do it. And the, to, to your question, it's possible because you start with a platform that's already there. Mm. You start with functionality that's already created. You don't start with a blank sheet of paper. So it lends itself to those sort of bite-sized chunks by topic, um, even if they are the more complicated ones because they're areas that you're going to change. There's pre-built functionality that allows you to make that workshop feel very tangible and very real to the people. They get to see it in action, and then it's explicit. So we, some parts of Agile is about doing stuff faster, but a lot of it's also about risk management, and it's about yeah. buy-in. So if you can interact with the technology and the software, because it's made possible, because it's a platform with, with pre-built functionality, then it's explicit. So it's not how I describe it in a PowerPoint document or a Word document that becomes a surprise in testing that yeah. it wasn't exactly what you thought. It's it's something you've interacted with in the design process that also then helps accelerate the build. And that must help with the people journey as well, obviously. It, yeah. it builds the buy-in. It's also, um, I mean, we, we've touched on it a few times, but you've got an, a whole implementation to build the capability and the skills inside the organisation, not just at go live, but then to take and carry that journey on going forward. So you you need to use every opportunity to be able to build that skill and capabilities. Mm. And those interactive workshops using the software and interacting with it is how you start building that familiarity so that when you get to the sort of main training bulk at the end, it's not all new news. Yeah. Can I ask you, the, uh, I think this is something that is interesting to many companies who are about to do what you're doing. And this is a huge transformation, lots of functions being affected. And I guess there are other streams in there, like ERPs or other things that might be getting in your way, if you will. <laughs> uh, are there ways to prioritize to get your way of things done before? Or is there like a competition of resources or what's happening? No, I would say it's all about alignment. I, I mean, alignment and collaboration are basically two of my key words here. But um, it's all about alignment and both within the steering group. And in our steering group in the program, we have um, both the group CFO, who is the sponsor of the program as well. Um, we also have the business area CFOs being represented, so all four of them. And we also have the group CIO and then myself and um, the group business control manager as well. And uh, I mean, we need to be aligned on the decisions that we take, 
but also within the broader perspective when it comes to finance management overall and also the IT management. But this program is also reflected in our global finance OKR, so it's included in, in the objectives for this year as well as for next year. So I think it's quite clear there as well, and given it's a central part in those, that this is a prioritized program. And um, of course, always when you are in a program, you want to, I mean, you always tend to think that your program is the most important. Um, but I think that another perspective of looking at this is that we have a really short time, time plan for, for implementing one stream. Whilst if you compare to the ERP journeys that we're having within the different business areas, they are spread over seven up to ten years. Yeah. And that also, I mean, we, we can't wait for that long. Um, and this, this system also impacts all of our entities as well. So that's another way of looking at it as well. And that leads me to, because now you or you learn things in this part of the uh, program. What do you see now as the, if you know, I don't know, maybe the the future roadmap? Things that you already now see that might become as phase two or phase three or phase four. Any tangible stuff? <laughs> what we uh, what we see or what we have said basically. So for for go live. I mean, for, for us, it's a bigger transformation journey overall. So at Go Live, we want to ensure that we have functionalities that, that can make us close a monthly and quarterly closing. And after that, we will, of course, add more functionalities. One of them that is left for us to explore is uh, the driver-based forecasting. Um, how, will we want, how do we want to work with that uh, in the organization? Some parts we have ordered decided and have been approved by the steering group, such as adding a functionality on consolidating um, the operational consolidation, um, which is something that we don't have today. So obviously that is not nothing that we will also add to begin with, but that comes for, it, it will come in the future, but it also takes more time for the business to, to adapt to, because in some cases you will need to do changes in the ERP systems, yeah. uh, you will need to ensure that you collect the right information needed. But there are different types and I mean we have a lot to left to explore as well if it comes to all the things you can do with dashboards and reports. Yeah. Of, of course we want to have, I mean we need to have something when going live and this is something that the organization, organization really asks for. And it, it was actually the top top wish for, for the next system in our survey that we also did with our users to ensure that we can build reports in a good way in the system and that they can do as well. Um, but that those are things that we need to explore as well. How can we do it in a good way? How can we ensure that our users want to use one stream in a good way and not only extracting the data and work with it somewhere else? Because we want to, I mean, we will build things for our own sake, of course, as well. But let's, whatever we build for, for our review from a group perspective, let's build things that they want to use as well because it will help them. If it helps us in our review, it will definitely help the organization as well. Yeah, I always think it's good because you're sharing perspectives of how you're looking at something. So, you know, you might ask somebody to do something because you need it to supplement a consolidated income statement that they potentially never see. Yeah. So I always think it's great to share what you look at because it then allows people to understand, oh, that is why you're asking those questions. That's what's generating it. And then they can think about how they feed into that more efficiently. So you don't ask the question, you have the answer as well. So I, always, I find that very, very interesting. One of the things as well is, you know, we, we talk about roadmap and journey, like Marcus was saying there, and it's always very, very linear. But you mentioned about other programs that are ongoing that can take sort of 10 years and you know, there's going to be things that come along in that 10 year time that you're going to need to react to. Um, do you see one stream and th the, the functionality and solution being able to branch off and deal with those challenges that you're, you're presented with? Yeah, I think so. I, I really do think that it will help us in a lot of areas. Um, I also think that for us, it's going to be a lot about prioritization as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because obviously, I mean, we would love to add a lot of functionalities and 
uh, and, and make our, our life easier, so to speak. But the journey uh, to go live with new functionality is also quite, I mean, it's intense and mm. there is a lot of work behind it. Yeah. So I really think also when, when looking at new functionalities in the future phases, we also need to be nice to ourselves basically and ask ourselves what, what can we bear with at the moment because now we are in full speed with the program and in the second phase we will probably not be as many resources it will be more day-to-day -day operations uh, so that's also one aspect that i think is really important when put, when setting up the roadmap so what what's reasonable what can yes. we do how can we manage this because we still want to be the employer of choice yep. so we still want want employees to feel that they can cope with the changes mm -hmm. we also want them i mean there are also two sides of the coins basically we want them to cope with the changes and to adapt for them but we also want them to to see that we are doing changes that helps them so it takes out manual steps that take makes us take the next step but it's always a, a balance act there yeah ensuring that you don't put too much pressure on the organization uh, as well as adding new benefits for them when working yeah so no shortage of ambition but uh, some realism too yeah do you see this affecting potentially new people coming into to um Sambic? and i don't mean like affecting them but attracting them this shift yeah, I hope so. It did for me. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> yeah, I really like it. probably that. started with that. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> no, but it, it did for me. And uh, I think, I mean, as I, I when I've had interviews with, uh, with newcomers, mm -hmm. I, I, that's something that I'm pushing for myself, actually, as well, that we're in the middle of this pro program. Yeah. And it is a unique opportunity to actually both impacting on a solution that will, will be here for a long, long time, but also to, to learn about the system. Because, I mean, it's not that often that you really go into behind the scenes, so to speak, and look, uh, and look what you have within the engine. Yeah. But now we have the opportunity to really look at how, how are all the functionality being built and to really understand that. Otherwise, it's so easy to either push the consolidation button or you translate the data yeah. or you, you retrieve a report and you don't really think of what's behind there. So I think it's a really unique opportunity. And for me, I, I, that's a triggering part for me and to learn new stuff. And that's something that I really try to, to put forward for our employees. Yep. Very good. We do have quite a few questions from the audience yeah. out there. Um, so let's see, we need, need to be semi-short. Okay. Uh, quite a few questions. One good one that I think we get all the time. Is there any reason why you don't harmonize your ERP systems to reduce the complexity? That was one of my top wishes for the goals for next year, but it was it was not on the <laughs> final part later on. Um, I think, I mean, we are a decentralized company um, and group. And, and from a group perspective, yes, that would make my life easier. It would most likely make the life easier for a lot of people, but it's not up to me to decide. It's actually up to the business area and each business area to decide on what suits their needs the best. But we are, I mean, one of the business areas are in particular in, in a big ERP journey. So they are streamlining towards one solution. And what I'm trying to wish for is that they would also streamline them and use one chart account because I think that would be really helpful. Yeah. <laughs> use your wishes sure. wisely. Yeah. <laughs> so another one, which is um, a good one, I think. If you were to embark on this journey today, what would you have done differently? What would I have done different? I think adding more time for, for integrations. And I would still spend a lot of time on alignments, but also adding more, more also in the start of when we were in the phase of choosing the system, maybe add more of the resources from, from the organization. So we were we were asking everyone, or we sent out the invitations to when, when the different system suppliers were demo casing the, their systems. We actually had quite a broad invitation, but we could have probably made it even broader because we see that there is a lot of interest. People are want to understand what they will receive and, and to understand the differences between different suppliers. So that I think is, is really good. And, and to work even closer with IT 
earlier on in the process. Yeah. So we did, but to have a more in-depth collaboration earlier on. Of course. Uh, it's okay if you elaborate. Uh, <laughs> uh, Is there anything about your moustache? <laughs> nothing about my moustache, no, nothing. Um, I'm glad you brought it up. <laughs> Another question. How are you organized in terms of the implementation project team? Do you foresee a need to change supporting governance? Quite a big question. The model that you have around governance, the one that you have now and when you've gone live. Yeah, good question. We actually have had a workshop on uh, the governance. And what we figured out there, we will actually follow up on this next week as well when we have workshops. Um, but what we saw from, from that discussion together with some of your colleagues was that we, we are in a quite good shape today. We have uh, different forums where we are following up on changes that we want to do. What I do see that I want to add is basically some sort of forum where we also align in a broader way with IT. So somewhere where we can also add the, the group enterprise architect in, into the discussions. Because today we are, we are having uh, very talented resources in, in my teams as well. So today we are basically able to, to build whatever we want in the system and to make it work for us today. So we have not been that dependent on others uh, before. But I think now when we have a broader understanding, I think that would also help us because it's not about... I mean, we will also be able to create a lot of solutions in the future, but it's good if we understand how that impacts other systems around us, especially if we want to drive a seamless flow and automation throughout the organization. So I think, yeah, some differences, but not that many. Okay, cool. I'll continue. <laughs> so <laughs> another one regarding the, uh, the project and the team. Uh, so what kind of skills and competences, and I know that you've been thinking a lot about this, what kind of skills and competences are needed in the project team and also in the future to continue to evolve with the solution? Do you need other types of roles in finance or you know, other skill sets? That's the question. Yeah, um, I was just thinking project team. The core team for us is how many are we? I think the core team for us is 40 persons right now in the, in the program. But if, if I read the question as team, as my organization later on, because within my responsibility, I have the team working, being responsible for the system and the maintenance of it. And in that team, I think, or, or that team at least need to work even closer with IT going forward. So that I think that we need to, to add So more more IT competence in close collaboration with this team. I also think that we need to be good at uh, handling dashboards and uh, reports and things like that. Because if we're not good at that, we won't be able to utilize the system in the best way. Get it out, yeah. Yes, yeah, so I think that is really important for us and to that's add. A, that's always a big point for yourselves, isn't it, as well? It is. It's interesting, isn't it? We've... I mean, we've definitely been guilty in the past of focusing a lot on change training, the technical implementation, data integration, and then forgetting the sort of single biggest purpose of the system, which is to deliver information in a usable format where and when it's needed. So um, what we try to do now is have a, and it is a skill and a capability, but a specific team, the insights team, to be part of the project so that the system is being designed with exactly that in mind, that the outputs are coming in a usable format where and when they're needed. But when you're saying working tighter together with IT, in what sense do you mean? I think that we can learn from each other and a lot about, I mean, the world is not just around our system, sorry to say, but, <laughs> but it's not. And that's something that we need to understand. And they have a good understanding on, on our roadmap from an IT perspective, because we have our objectives but IT has there as well and how they should contribute to the overall strategy. So we need to work, I mean, we need to be aligned here because otherwise me, we might run in that direction and IT says that we will run in that direction and then obviously we can't do both. So I think it's really important that we understand each other and working more closely together, they will understand basically what hurts on us and we will understand what hurts on them and do's and don'ts will be much more clearer. Indeed, no. Oh. It's been the same for the last 20 years, so I think it's true. Absolutely. <laughs> it is true. Uh, there are a couple of questions related to um, 
Actually, here's a new one. Do you see sustainability reporting as another key component to integrate, I guess, in the future, the ESG part? Yeah, we are definitely looking at that. Um, that question doesn't lie on my table, so to speak, uh, first of all, uh, yet. <laughs> but of course, I mean, we also need to report on, on the sustain sustainability framework. Uh, and we are doing some of it already today, and we need to definitely add much more. But that's left to explore. Um, but yes, that's something that we are exploring. Yeah, it is a hot topic, indeed. It is, In every yes. company. Um, a question regarding or more towards Inlumi, or about Inlumi to you. Okay. <laughs> Choose Inlumi as the implementation partner. And the question is, how are you working together? What type of resources and how do you well, use them? Yeah. Um, for me, no matter what kind of supplier have, for me it's important to have a partnership. So I want to work close with, with my suppliers, no matter if it's an implementation resource or if it's a system supplier. For me it's really core to have a good relationship. Um, because then we will also learn from each other and we're all in this together. I mean, we want to succeed, you want us to succeed and you want to succeed yourselves mm -hmm. as, as do one stream, of course. Um, and we are working quite close, I would say. I don't know if you agree, but close in the uh, program. We are having both Illumi resources as well as Sandvik resources in the different types of work streams. We're also discussing for the future to work with your finance application management team as well. Um, and this is also a good way for us ensuring that we are not people dependent as well within Sandvik because I mean, things change people, people change their roles, they, they move around internally or they might move externally. So for me, it's also important, given we're a public company, I always need to be able to deliver numbers to the market. And for me, it's important that if we need to be able to work with a change or something in the system, that I have several resources that are able to work with that. E either it's with the help and support of Inlumi or it, it's with the help and support of the internal team. Uh, but it's important to have both ways there so you're not standing with a few resources that can actually implement something. I, I think from my perspective, it's the single most important thing is a blended integrated team. So yes, everyone needs to be clear on sort of skills needed and responsibilities, but it's a single project team, no matter who the name of the company is that pays the salary at the end of the month. Yeah, and that's something also, I mean, we are having, I think this is the third or fourth workshop, or th uh, third workshop we're having next week. And for us, it doesn't really matter if it's Sandic Resource, Illumi Resource or, or someone else. Um, all of us are, are going to be be there in that workshop because we're all in one team yeah. for this program and it's really important. We, we don't make a difference. That's cool. We're getting to the end of the hour and I'll just end with some praise because when you were saying partnership and we touched on this the other day and I know that exactly a year ago we had a meeting with you together with Peter and you said that you want a partnership with the vendors, us and in this case in Lumi. But the way we looked at you, the way you partner up with your colleagues Everyone that you included, that was true partnership internally and the way you communicated to us and to Illumi, because I guess partnership is in a way communication. And that has continued throughout the year. We had quite a few discussions the last month, and I know that's a lot of work with Illumi. It stands out, and the only way to succeed with that is good communication. And indeed, you and your team stands out when it comes to that, and we want to be continued to be your partners, of course. I think we just about stop, and I want to say thank you to, of course, to, to Illumi, to Ash, and to my dear colleague Ryan. But of course, most to you, Mars. I mean, this is it's fantastic that you're sharing this information, being so transparent to, to all of us. And I hope this has been good to the audience as well. We do have a few more questions left in the, in the chat, but we don't have time for them now. Hopefully, we can get back to you and, and answer them digitally. There will also, for all of you who has registered for this, again, you will get a link to the, uh, to the recording, so you can see it again. And I guess you're very, you are on the, let's say, the social media sometimes. So I'm sure if people want to communicate back to you, they can. Yeah. Very good. Thank you so much, all three of you. Thank you. Thank you.